Is Venom possible? The answer, ironically, is frightening. Science Behind Venom Venom is one of the strangest and yet most beloved comic book villains this side of ever. Spider-Man fans and fans of comics alike recognize Venom as one of the most angry, dark, and frightening characters to date. But could Venom exist in the real world? If so, how? What would need to happen? Well, to figure that out, we need to break down not who Venom is, but what he is. Venom himself is really two characters. Here's the combination of the human Eddie Brock and an alien life form referred to as a symbiote. The symbiote, in the comics, bonds with a host organism and grants that organism superpowers. The idea of an alien goo that can enhance human ability sounds crazy, right? Actually, the answer might surprise you. Let's take it step by step. Are life forms like the symbiote possible? Well, if you know what amoebas are, then you know that on a small scale, yes, they are. Amoebas are microscopic, single-celled life forms that feed, through absorption, off of bacteria and smaller organisms. Amoebas can be found mostly in water-related environments, like the ocean. However, what you might not have known is that amoebas can grow to monstrous sizes. Monstrous for microscopic life, at least. In the western Pacific Ocean, located roughly 125 miles east of the Mariana Islands, is a location referred to as the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench is famous for a few things, but namely, it is known for its strange inhabitants, and the fact that it is, as we've been able to find thus far, the deepest area of the Earth's ocean. The Mariana Trench could obviously be holding a lot of secrets, but what if you were to be told that one of those secrets is giant amoebas? Would you believe it? Believe it or not, it's true. Amoebas that grow up to 5 centimeters in diameter have been observed and recognized as real in the depths of the Mariana Trench. For an amoeba, that is gigantic. Even for us, this find is extremely significant. It shows that the limits to size of organisms may be far greater than we thought. There's no doubt these giant amoebas have to feed constantly, but somehow they pull it off anyway. It isn't hard to imagine the symbiote could be a species of giant amoeba. Speaking of feeding, that brings us to our next point. There are types of amoebas, and some of them actually can feed off materials other than bacteria and microscopic life. Specifically, I'm referring to a species of amoeba called Negleria phalari. This species of freshwater amoeba has, both unfortunately and oddly, been observed feeding off of human brain chemicals, which can actually lead to death in the host human. A study conducted by Abdul Menon Baig at the Aga Khan University in Karachi, Pakistan, successfully attempted to learn what attracts this species of brain-eating amoebas to the human brain. The studies show that Negleria phalari is attracted to the brain chemical acetylcholine, which is produced in the frontal area of the human brain. Interestingly enough, this and the giant amoebas connect heavily to the idea of the symbiote. We know that both are possible, and it isn't hard to imagine a species of giant amoeba that could feed off of chemicals produced in the human brain. Specifically, if this species were to be attracted to adrenaline, it would already almost perfectly mirror the symbiote's fictional actions, which includes surviving off of negative emotions. Adrenaline is a chemical produced in the human brain during times of stress, anger, anxiety, and in general, negative emotions. Right. So we covered that it is possible that a species of giant amoeba could evolve to feed off of human adrenaline, similar to how the symbiote feeds off of the host's negative emotions. But what about superpowers? There is a chemical in the human body that can answer that question. Myostatin is a chemical in the human body produced by the MSTN gene. The job of myostatin is to regulate muscle and skeletal growth, so that neither is too strong or too weak naturally. But if we've got an amoeba that feeds off of chemicals in the human brain, is it possible that it could also feed off a chemical like myostatin at the same time? The answer is yes. If the amount of myostatin were to be reduced in the human body due to it being absorbed by this amoeba, then muscle and skeletal growth would have a higher limit for strength. They could get stronger and not be cancelled by myostatin, not until it reaches a considerably higher level than usual anyway. This could very well explain how the symbiote gives its host superhuman strength. Okay, okay, this is a lot to take in, but bear with me, we're almost at the end of the ride. The last thing we observe the symbiote do is shapeshift, even to the point of forming solids like teeth and tongues. Although there's no way even for a giant adrenaline myostatin eating amoeba to form a solid around its host, shapeshifting is fairly easy. The amoeba simply pushes this area, called the cytoskeleton, into the plasma membrane, causing the shape of the amoeba to contort to whatever the cytoskeleton is making it. This could explain Venom's webs, his occasional transformation, and other strange features we see. The teeth and tongue would, in the real world, likely not be solid, but there's no doubt that similar appendages could exist there simply made out of amoeba. So there we have it. 
As it turns out, the idea of venom isn't such a crazy notion after all. In fact, given the right planetary conditions, it is extremely possible for such an organism to exist. The symbiote is really a giant amoeba that feeds off of certain chemicals in the body. Gotta say, it doesn't make venom sound any less scary. Still, wouldn't want to run into him in a dark alley. Hope everyone enjoyed the episode of Science Behind Superheroes. I've actually gotten a lot of questions to do Venom. Here are some comments that have been asked, and there's been plethora over time. And recently, we all got the announcement that there would still be a Venom movie. And I decided that I do want to keep doing more of these, like, these basic, just about a super-powered person in general, rather than go into specifics and specifics, because I feel kind of like a nitpicking at that point, and I still will do that sometimes, obviously, but this was just overall more enjoyable to do, and I hope you guys learned a lot from it, because... I certainly did. I had no idea giant amoebas existed. That is crazy stuff. Also, if you guys want, you guys can look in the description to see all of my sources. I definitely recommend it so you guys can learn more about this topic. But uh, yeah, guys, if you guys like this episode, make sure to like and make sure to leave a comment as to what superhero or supervillain you guys want to see me do next. Have a good week.